uh, it's always a pleasure to see you and uh, excellent organization. What a place to be. Um, the topic is related to what Dr. Yajnik was saying, but uh, at the same time, it is diff different. This is the forward. Oh, this one. Right. Okay. So as opposed to adipose tissue, the skeletal muscle phys pathophysiology has not been given as much research attention. Sarcopenia research has been relegated to backbench, especially in India. And till now, we don't have much of a research. So what I'm going to talk about is something which is available worldwide. And there are a couple of studies which are available in India. And I shall take recourse to those studies as the lecture progresses. Now this is the age of sarcopenia. The sarcopenia is age-related involuntary loss of muscle mass and volume. And sarcopenia combined with excess body fat, about 30% in men and 40% in women, and this may vary also uh, according to population, uh, is called sarcopenic obesity. Sarcopenia is predicted to uh, physical disability and mortality, and I'll show you the clinical correlates of sarcopenia in a little while. Uh, and if you see here, um, how much sarcopenia has occurred to Arnold Transgur's body? If you see, see here, uh, just look at the biceps. They look like a, you know, a foot uh, width, and at 69 years of age, they're half although I'm sure she must be doing exercises. So this is what age does to the muscles. So aging population is consistently increasing in India, India and in all countries. And sarcopenia prevalence, of course, it depends on country to country. 25% above 70 years, 40 to 50% above 80 years, and likely more in Indian population, although I must say at this time, population-wide data are not available. So let's look at the muscle itself. How much muscle do we have? Say, is there a student here? Any student here? Uh, can you tell me, uh, in a 70 kg man or a woman, how much muscle would you think there is? 10 kg, 20 kg, 30 kg, 40, 50? Anybody? OK. So let's look at this figure. So this is the total body mass of a 70, no, I must say, this is taken from the reference man, white Caucasian reference man. So it's not exactly applicable to Indian, but it'll give you a general idea. So 70 kg, uh, man, out of which lean body mass, which is a fat-free mass, which is often given to you in many reports, is minus fat. So 19% minus fat, 18, 1% lean body mass. Now, if we take 81% lean body mass, the soft tissue mass is 91% of that. That means we have deleted bone out of that. Are you, are you with me at, till now? Okay. So then you come to the lean body mass and look at only body muscle, skeletal muscle. You are left with 53%, which is 27 kg. So 70 kg man, 27 kg is the skeletal muscle. The rest is other organs, uh, smooth muscles, and so on. Now, if you take this total body muscle mass, then how much is appendicular? Appendicular is hand, feet. Appendicular mass is 75% of that. So appendicular mass is 20 kg. And out of which, how much is the leg mass? Leg mass, muscle mass is 75% of that. So 15 kg, so we are left with legs to walk and increase our muscle mass. 15 kg out of 27 kg, half of it is leg, leg muscle mass. So I hope I'm making it clear so that we, as we go along, we are not uh, mistaken how much is the muscle atrophied and things like that. This is the uh, reference man, 70 kg white. It may be different in Indians. Now let's look at definitions of sarcopenia so that we are clear what we are going to talk about in next uh, 25 minutes or so. So there are dimensions and overlap. And here, the students, please uh, look at this slide. 
Frailty is a multi-dimensional geriatric syndrome, not exactly sarcopenia. It is much bigger than sarcopenia, or much worse off than sarcopenia. So there's a loss of functional reserve in response to small stressors. And unintentional weight loss, exhaustion, multiple diseases, low physical activity, slowness in walk, low muscle strength. So sarcopenia is incorporated in that, but there is a weight loss and things like that. So frailty is much worse off than sarcopenia. And here is sarcopenia. It is unidimensional. Sarcopenia is unidimensional. Sarcopenic obesity is bidirectional because there is obesity mixed with sarcopenia. And there is also osteoporosis, which is unidimensional. And osteosarcopenia is bidimensional. And then there is a peripheral neuropathy also, which is unidimensional. And then neurosarcopenia is bidimensional. So I hope now you have understood the length and width of the, the various type of syndromes which are available along with sarcopenia. Now what is the definition? How do you define sarcopenia? Here lies the problem. Because there are a number of definitions which are available. I'll, I'll uh, talk to you only on about the common ones. Main component is low muscle strength and this is usually assessed by the hand grip strength. And there are options to assess lower limb strength also because hand grip strength is only hand grip. Uh, and the simple thing is chair stand test. Now, wherever you are sitting today, if you get up and sit five times and time your chair stand test, and if it is more than 12%, then you are sarcopenic at least in the leg muscle. I'll show you more. Low muscle mass estimated by DEXA scan, but it could be a bioelectrical impedance or mid arm circumference or calf circumference and so on. Low physical performance, four or six meter walk. One second per meter, you must achieve. If it's slower than that, you are low on the functional reserve. And then community is, uh, screening, there is a SARC questionnaire also. You can use hand grip strength also, mid arm circumference and so on. Do we have in India, something, a definition of sarcopenia? No, we don't have. So I have taken recourse to the uh, definition, closest possible definition, which is from Asia Consensus Group in 2019, where very nicely primary care setting and hospital setting. Now primary care setting, they have put a calf circumference either or a questionnaire which is called SARC questionnaire or combining the two calf uh, circumference and the questionnaire. And then either hand grip strength or five times chair standing test. If these can be done anywhere, but hand grip will actually entail a special apparatus. So you can combine the questionnaire or calf circumference, which may also vary between populations, and physical performance on the on outpatient basis. And, and and, and then diagnose there's a possible sarcopenia. And in hospital, apart from muscle strength, uh, physical performance, you also can assess using a DEXA, uh, uh, the appendicular skeletal mass, which should be ideally more than seven kg per meter square in males and 5.4 kg per meter square in females. This is per meter square, not the total mass that I showed you. If all three measures are present, then it is severe sarcopenia. If two out of three, then there are the, the sarcopenia is not severe. Now this is my, uh, the, you know, my I made my secretary to get up five times. He is uh, 38 years old. So he did it in 7.5 seconds, and I, at 63 years, did it in 10 seconds. So I'm still not sarcopenia, but just about there. So I have to work more on my. Muscles, the leg muscles. Leg muscles is the problem in Indians, so I'll come to that. Uh, this is the European, this is the European. First you do SARC uh, uh, questionnaire. If it's negative, no sarcopenia. Positive, go on to measure muscle strength and then go on to measure the muscle quantity using DEXA scan and then performance test. So one by one, and if all three are present, it is severe sarcopenia. Now, at this time, I must say that the body changes with age, and uh, that must be understood to see how the muscle goes down and fat goes up. 
one muscle muscle is not a, a some you know a organ without a endocrine function there are myokines there something like adipokines and the exercise actually produces more myokines and protects against adiposity and cardiovascular disease that as the age goes down that myokine potential to pro protect against adiposity and cardiovascular disease goes down and one of the main uh, myokine is myostatin which dr jajnik had uh, referred to i'll come to that so progressive loss of weight uh, loss occurs after 40 years greater in peripheral hands versus legs 40 to 70 years 88% per decade of the muscle loss after which 15% per decade and if you see here um, if you see here uh, this is the uh, on the on the top is the female thigh muscle at 70 years of age and this is 85 uh, years of age and you see the muscle mass is fairly well preserved here and it's full of fat here intramyocellular triglyceride fat inside the muscles loss of strength occurs from 40 years 15 percent per decade and after 70 years 25 to 40 percent per decade the skeletal muscles loss of muscle quality and quantity decreased number of size of muscle fibers which is type 2 fibers decreased synthesis of muscle protein but most importantly reduced mitochondrial function i'll come to that so this is primary sarcopenia age related sarcopenia sarcopenia may come secondary to disease uh, diabetes cancer copd cirrhosis number of diseases and the fat mass is at the same time so while the muscle is going down fat is increasing there is more in entrapped down fat more in women increase in the fat in liver and pancreas and increase in the muscle fat this must be understood very clearly and i'll come to this in a little later now uh, there is fat distribution changes as the age goes on and there is more of ectopic fat less of a mental and subcutaneous fat and more of metabolic dysfunction all three types of fat more of insulin resistance all three types of fat but inflammation and problem with adipogenesis may occur more in subcutaneous fat and this is also shown here so if the the pre adipocyte uh, capacity to store fat decreases then there is a more free fatty acid and you see free fatty acid going here to muscle and liver and to the adipose tissue stores and this causes insulin resistance inflammation and diabetes but we are not interested today in liver fat we are not interested today in the subcutaneous fat but we are interested today in the skeletal muscle fat and i'll come to that a little later uh, let's look at indian data a good study is available and i'll refer to that study because that will make things a little bit more clearer but before that we did something which is very preliminary in a pilot type of study some several uh, years back in more than 65 years age patients with diabetes we uh, did the jamar hand dynamometer test this is the ja jamar this is hand grip dynamometer and this female is 53 year old 13 years of diabetes duration markedly uncontrolled diabetes serum creatinine 2.3 grip strength only three markedly sarcopenic that's what we found in males and females and if you look at the earlier cutoffs if we used the earlier cutoff in this particular page uh, uh, preliminary data then value in males average value was markedly low and the 69 percent just on hand grip strength 69 percent on males and 95 percent of the females were sarcopenic but that's that's a very preliminary thing but what a better study was done in chandigarh uh, by ramesh pal and dr badada a very good study in 804 patients where they did dexa we did hand grip strength and usual gait speed and cut off for 20 to 39 years was taken as the baseline over which they compared the data and they found that hand grip strength 20, the cut off is 27.5 and 18.0 for males and females this is a cut off which can be taken for any further study 
and the axial uh, skeletal muscle, mass, sorry, appendicular, uh, 6.1 and 4.61, which is the value is much less than the Western population. So these, this is a good study, population-based study, and can be taken as a reference study for any further study that you might design to do. And this study further, they compare the, the uh, hand grip strength in the, from the NANS, the uh, US data, versus the present data, and found that at each age group, in males and in females, there is a markedly lower hand grip strength in Indian people. And this is particularly apparent in the 70 to 85 years of age group. And for those, I'll give you one example. 31 hand grip strength at 80 years of a white male is equivalent to 32 okay. at 55. So we are having at 55 years what the Western person has at 85 years. So this is the comparative data from NANS. Also, very interestingly, hand grip strength actually goes down pretty fast after 40 years, in, especially in males. And axial, uh, the appendicular skeletal muscle mass actually does not go down that fast. So if you look at this, the speed in males, possibly decline at androgens also. And that speed is much less. Let's look at the causes and clinical perspective. The causes of sarcopenia, by now we have some idea that they're age-related, vascular-related, hormone-related, inflammation-related, weight loss-related, and neuronal-related, but, but specifically, I'm interested in my, mitochondrial dysfunction. I'm interested in, in males, I've already told you, low testosterone. I'm also interested in low vitamin D, and I'm also interested in inflammation, inflammaging, aging with inflammation. That's what we have in Indian population, more inflammation with aging. And of course, there is genetics, and there are a number of candidate genes, including MSTN, that is myostatin gene. Uh, this is the, I think, I think this is the crux of the matter, the mitochondria. Mitochondria are, the normal mitochondria becomes normal, becomes dysfunctional as far as decreased content is concerned, quality control, dynamics, oxidative stress and with aging, with environment, polluted environment that we have and inflammation that we have more and with a poor nutrition, the, there is a breakdown in the mitochondria and so is the breakdown in the muscles. So what are the adverse implications? High prevalence of diabetes and cardiovascular disease, increased fractures, falls, frailty, increased Mortality, shorter survival if there is a comorbid disease, longer hospital stay, higher post-operative complication in cancer patients, shorter time to metastasis, and higher toxicity of anti-cancer drugs. Indians are physically inactive. This has been proven time and again. And we, some time back, published this particular uh, study, 2010, in Indian, uh, International Journal of Obesity. We looked at all the studies till now where South Asians have been compared to white Caucasian, and uniformly, the South Asians are less active. And one such study is on the top, where the South Asian did 166 minutes per weekly of exercise, and the white Caucasian, 321. I was talking about thigh muscle. Thigh muscles, muscle mass is 25% lower than the white. And here comes the muscular fat. This is the... Uh, proton NMR spectroscopy from one of our previous studies where uh, intramyocellular triglyceride um, peak is shown. This is higher in our patients with diabetes. This is the intramyocellular triglyceride. And this, this uh, we published in Diabetes Medicine in 2006. And you can see higher intramyocellular triglyceride. Question is, could just muscle strength loss contribute to diabetes in Indian population? That's a good question. If we forget about body, uh, when a match BMI, we match body fat, match waist circumference, match age, match gender, everything we match. One person has low strength, other person does not. Can that low strength lead to diabetes? Anybody? So there is some some evidence. So this is, this is the evidence. Now this is the hand grip uh, 
strength of white, black, and South Asian. On the top, South Asians have six point lower grip strength than blacks and white. We know that by now, by previous data. But what is important to see here is that the graph for diabetes goes up with the lower hand grip strength. And for one kg per kg body weight hand grip, South Asians have 12 times more diabetes. So you may think that you are thin and you are okay, your muscles are weak, you are at high risk for diabetes. This is a very good study we have published in 2017 by my colleagues. Now comes what happens in COVID-19. What happens if we treat patients of diabetes with some drugs? What happens to sarcopenia? Uh, this is the model. I want you to understand. So traditionally, there is a gradual decline, which we have seen, and we have seen the decline in hand grip strength so acutely in males in Indian. But the moment illness occurs, say typhoid, COVID-19, UTI, COVID-19 again, we have seen this repeatedly, and the usual curve is deviated to more steep curve of sarcopenia. This is what happens. Uh, we did some study in uh, patients of diabetes who had COVID-19 versus who did not have COVID-19. We found marked high fatigue score on the top. And in those with the fatigue, highest fatigue score, the, score, the hand strength was low and physical activity is low. So COVID-19 itself will produce sarcopenia in those with severe disease, and they will have more fatigue, more difficulty in walking, more withering of muscles. They must be handled in a multidisciplinary manner. What about the uh, diabetes? You know, in the, the appendicular skeletal muscle declines by 1% per year in patients with diabetes versus 0.7% per year in patients without diabetes. And suppose we give them bigonides, we don't know what happens. But bigonides have been now tried in uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So they may have some good effect on the muscle. What about is the insulin secretagogue? Hypoglycemia induced myocyte apoptosis. So they are not good in patients with sarcopenia. Alpha glucosidase inhibitor, we don't have much data, but thiazuridine deons, they decrease intramyocellular triglyceride, which I showed you. And the, uh, the glucose GLP-1 may prote uh, prevent protein breakdown, and DP4 inhibitor may be also good for muscles. And we are unclear as far as GLT-2 inhibitors are concerned. But I'll show you this study which we recently published for, due to something else. We looked at uh, pancreatic fat and liver fat. We also uh, found that their, their uh, weight decrease, their subcutaneous fat decrease. But what, that is not the point of showing this slide here. Point of showing this slide is their hand grip strength improved despite loss of fat in this study with GLT-2 inhibitor. Now management, I'll take five to seven minutes, it's, it's okay. Right Judicious management is required, balanced diet, no fat diet. I have seen the keto diets and everything being discussed here, no fat diets here please. Keep in mind, 75% of the diet induced weight loss is composed of fat tissue and 25% fat free mass. So the moment they regain weight, it is all fat, no muscle is regained. The muscle is lost with diet-induced weight loss. So adverse effect of weight loss diets include aggravation of sarcopenic obesity, loss of bone density, risk of fracture. So you have to target both sarcopenia and obesity. And here I'll show you this graph, how the, the muscle protein synthesis occurs and what is the threshold of protein. There are a couple of people who are uh, diet, uh, nutritionists here. Good. Look at this. The, in young people, just 10 to 15 gram of protein is required for muscle protein synthesis. Somewhere which you can achieve here. And they will synthesize protein. In old people, almost double. This is what is called as anabolic resistance. And specifically, there's a leucine threshold. One gra uh, gram of leucine is required for young people. And that's somewhere here, leucine threshold, and for elderly, two grams. So there is a greater amount of protein which is required. 
So this slide is important for all nutritionists. 500 kilocalorie deficit diet with sufficient amount of high protein, 1 to 1.5 kg, comprising up to 30 percent of the total intake, usually 15 percent, to overcome anabolic resistance. Potential ad anabolic action of protein distribute evenly throughout the day. Higher per meal protein threshold, 25 to 30 gram, three times a day, away from carbohydrate, and Leucine must be six to eight gram per day. Of course, some people say excess, you do exercise and take protein afterwards. This is our study where we did a high protein diet, found that body mass index, waist circumference, everything was lost, but the fat free mass increased. So high protein in Indian patients over a period of time may help. And other things also can help. So vitamin D, there are some genomic effect, increase in the uh, contraction, improved contraction, increased muscle synthesis, and there is non-genomic effect, rapid entry of calcium, and people say falls are re reduced, muscular function is improved, gait is improved, but that's not true always. And one meta-analysis says only those people with the low vitamin D, and recent another meta-analysis says that it, nothing occurs with vitamin D supplementation. So, so this alone may not be sufficient, but if you add vitamin D and leucine, appendicular skeletal muscle mass increase. This experiment, very well done experiment shows. And there, is, you, there are several things which can decrease the inflammation in the body. Interleukin-6 CRP and omega-3 fatty acid is one of them. And one very good study showed with a comparison with corn oil that using a clamp technique, the omega-3 PUFAs actually increase the muscle protein synthesis. So we can stabilize mitochondria, which I showed you. Their biogenesis, quality control, metabolism, dynamics using branch chain amino acid, which is leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And maybe vitamin D, maybe PUFA, maybe selenium, and maybe zinc. Exercise, resistance exercise is number one. Aerobic is number two, and balance is number three. A combination of all exercises is absolutely important, which increase myostatin expression, IGF-1, and mitochondrial function improve. And if you see, diet alone, weight reduced from 95 to 75 kg, 30% fat reduced, 10% muscle also reduced. Multiple exercises with diet, reduction 91 to 82 kg, 18% fat reduced, and if you see the muscle, 4% increase. This is what happens, so please do not use diet alone. And we showed some time back in diabetes care, we published that three months of resistance exercise in diabetic patients actually improves muscle strength and function while reducing body fat and improving A1C. And there are a number of other, so lack of time I'm not going to, but just myostatin, we uh, published uh, that myostatin mutation actually is linked to low muscle mass in the population and increase in the fat mass. So this is gain of function and loss of function may improve muscle mass and decrease body fat. And see this bull, Belgian blue, uh, blue bull, breed of cattle born without myostatin is only muscle. There's hardly any fat here. So myostatin is current area of interest. So I just summarize my presentation. Aging is associated with sarcopenia, obesity, and redistribution of fat in ectopic tissues. Indians are particularly prone to it. All these changes are associated with inflammation, insulin resistance, hyperglycemia, CVD, frailty, disability, and excess mortality. Therapy of sarcopenia obesity must be managed judiciously. Weight loss alone will exacerbate sarcopenia and bone loss. Therapy should combine high quality protein diet with appropriate exercise and extremely important to combine progressive resistance, progressive resistance exercises within multi-component program when aerobic exercise is of secondary importance but should be included. And other things like vitamin D, omega-3, PUFA, along with balanced diet will help. And there are other therapies which are coming in. We don't know the significance of it. Thank you for allowing extra time to me. Thank you, Dr. Alka. Come, I'll just take a comment. Because we are running, running short, short of time, time I will...